Welcome back to Recovery Raw. This video is going to be um, about my first run in AA when I first got introduced to the program. All right, It's a little bit funny to talk about now. At the time, I was going through hell, as always in my addiction. So, um, okay. So, let me start by saying um, when I was clean before I even, you know, I re again, I relapsed. I could always get myself clean. I, I couldn't keep myself clean. Um, what I do now is work the AA program to stay clean. And uh, that'll be for another video. This video is going to be specifically about, um, you know, let's say two relapses ago when I. This is my second go in AA right now. So the first one, when I first got introduced to AA, I'll start by saying. Okay, at the time I was clean, um, I had a get well job. I was working at a Metro PCS. Um, met this girl, okay? She came into mom, you know, she came to America for, she was there for three days. And uh, we exchanged phone numbers, whatever. And yeah, we hit it off. I was clean and everything, you know? And um, I think I was living at a soul of a house. I don't know. I can, Anyways, I ended up moving into her place. She lived down the road. And, you know, I'm clean. And then I had relapsed, of course. Okay. At first, I'm hiding the... That I'm using and everything. Um, you know, and fast forward to, you know, whatever. Eight months later, whatever it was. I'm using right in front of her. Um, I'm not hiding anything. I'm taking her father's car to go to Lawrence... Um, all the time, you know, just completely wild, not, not caring, um, using right in front of her, it didn't matter, you know, she's going through, she's going through all the, watching me go through all the insanity, now, of course, running wild like that, I'm on probation and shit, um, you know, she's seen, this poor girl, she's seen a lot of craziness one thing was um the worst detox of my life was when I had to get clean um I had you know I'm on probation telling them I'm, I'm gonna take the Vivitrol shot and I had rescheduled twice of course I can't get myself clean I have to it takes a lot for me to surrender and bite down and you know, endure the pain, and I know what I'm gonna have to go through. I can't do it. It's so bad that I had, they were threatening me, they were gonna put me in jail, okay? So, I had rescheduled the Vivitrol twice. I couldn't get myself clean. I went in there and took fake piss with me, and, um, you know, it looked like I was clean. I wasn't a day clean, and they injected me with the Vivitrol. Absolutely horrible. You know, when I took that shot, every hour that went by was, like, twice as twice as bad as the last hour for, like, a good eight hours. I mean, it was... They said I almost died. They said I could have killed myself. It was, it was real bad. And then, so, like, I take the shot. An hour later, I go back to, um, girlfriend's house and, uh, fucking dying. And her father, you know... Says to me, oh, can you give me a ride to the car dealership? I'm like, no. Like, yeah, I can give you a ride. I'm fucking dying, man. It was terrible. The worst detox I've ever experienced in my life. So, um, what happened? I don't know. That, so, you know, she's seen me, um, not being able to get out of the, the bed for like three days straight. Um, yeah, I don't know what happened. I must have stopped taking the shot, but eventually I was getting fucked up again. And um, her father had caught me, seen me all fucked up, and called my parents. And they had a little uh, get together, and you know, like a little mini little intervention on me. And I was all fucked up. I'm like, nah, I'm not fucking. Uh, I wasn't listening. Whatever. And they're all concerned. I mean, I put. My family through hell. They know everything that I've been through. Um, 
So, so I'm out of the house. Now, I'm not listening to anybody. I was homeless for, this is the one time I was homeless. I'm thinking about it now because I'm, I'm in Boxford, I'm driving through Boxford. I came up here at a, at a YMCA camp and it was around like fall time. So it was still kind of nice out. And I was working up here in Boxford and um, and there was a um, YMCA that I had been to before. It's like right on the lake. And um, man, it was like, dude, I didn't even care. It was great. They had electricity. They had uh, showers. It was right on the lake. There's fucking canoes everywhere. I was like, whatever. I did that for about two weeks. Um, it's This Boxford's a little bit close to Lawrence, so I'm getting fucked up, um, the one time I fucking hallucinated off heroin in my life, believe it or not, I've overdosed multiple times, this time, I probably almost overdosed, probably almost died, but this time, I had, it was in my truck, I'm in, um, this little campground place in the YMCA, and um, I was watching these videos on YouTube of like people just throwing cars right off of, of a cliff. And, um, and I'm watching that and I'm all fucked up. And I passed out. And in the dream, one of my friends, this girl was telling me, oh, um, you should drive down the hill and, and go over a jump. And um, she was like trying to pressuring me to do it in my dream and uh and I woke up and I was like in tears I'm like and I thought it was true at the time so it was like hallucinating or I was all fucked up I don't know and, and um I'm like in tears talking to myself like she was there or something it was weird and I'm like oh I'm not gonna fucking do that I'll die if you want me to go flying down that ditch and um down that hill over the jump and try to clear a ditch. I'm, I'm gonna kill myself if I don't make it. I don't know, it was like hallucinating. But anyways, like a week or two goes by, I'm fucking homeless, I'm like, fuck this. You know, okay, my my mother at the time, you know, she knows what I've been through. She didn't know what to do. She's going to al meetings. They're telling her about a program. Plymouth, you know, shout out to the Plymouth host. Plymouth, New Hampshire. Um, so my mother's like, oh, you should go to this rehab. She's been trying to get me to go to this rehab. I was like, I'm like, mom, I've done every program on the east side of the Mississippi. You don't have the magic cure for me or anything. You know? And lo and behold, she did. So, you know, I'm, so I went from the girlfriend's house to homeless to now, oh, to my parents, oh, um, I'll go to that rehab. Just give me a couple of days, and um, I'm gonna tell the probation officer. That's what I'm gonna do. So that's what I did. My parents let me stay there like a week. There was like a day I was gonna pick to um, check in with probation, tell them what's going on. Now, mind you, this probation officer had had told me when I first met him. And Kevin, if there's ever a problem or anything, come see me so we can work it out before it's too late, and then I can't help you cool go to tell him I'm gonna go to a rehab I got a problem he knows I got a problem he says no um I, I'm gonna hold you I'm like what the fuck I run out the the courthouse my truck is in like a 15 minute parking I jump on the phone like that they're trying to hold me probation officer runs out he's like who are you talking to I'm like my father he's like let me see the phone I'm like pause I'm like if I give I knew in my head I'm thinking if I give him this phone I'm t that's it I'm turning myself in I was like all right here I turn myself in he holds me 30 days so the girlfriend's house to homeless so my mother's and father's to um, Essex County and then they let um, they released me and let me go to the Plymouth house and that's where I got introduced to AA, the program. So, um, so yeah, I had nothing to lose. 
I had every I had already lost everything. I had nothing to lose at this point. Um, like thirty one, dealing with addiction for a long time. I had already tried everything my way. Nothing worked. I had nothing to lose. And this man told me, if I work this program to the best of my ability, he promises that I can stay clean. And I believed them too. So that's what I did. I jumped, you know, they introduced me to the 12 steps program. And, um, you know, it was a great, actually a great rehab. I, I didn't like a lot of, I hate the institutions, the detoxes, the, you know, none of that shit is fun. I'm not very good at community living at soap houses. I never, it's never worked for me. And that's just me personally. You know, some people do great in it, but I had never really did. That's just my story. So, uh, I'm not knocking it though, because it's helped a lot of people. So, um, so yeah, so that's what I did. And then I left the rehab. They put me into a sober house and, um, this one's in Haverhill. I didn't get along with the owner, honestly. And, uh, that's just what it was. And, um, so that was like the six different bed I had in like two months. And then, so I left that sober house. I went to the one in Wakefield. I got along with everybody at the sober house. Really good. I knew somebody that was in my room. It was a three-man room. I'm put in the middle. And on either side of me, there's, there's people. And they're both snoring like bears. So I was like, fuck, this is a bad hit. So, you know, I had learned the program. I learned that it works if you work it the program that I work even today that I'm going to continue to work it's the number one priority in my life and um but you know I had people snoring I was losing sleep I couldn't fucking sleep it was terrible so my prior so in my mind I was like okay um I'm gonna just work I was working for this guy um doing sales getting paid commission you know, my priority was making money, okay? I excelled in it. Um, I could work as many or as little hours as I wanted to. I was doing really good. I had saved up, you know, $20,000 in, in five months. So I thought I was doing great. I was doing good. The problem is my recovery didn't come first. So I, I got out of the sober house. I'm in I'm renting a room. And then... um with this girl in Movement Center that I met like on Craigslist or Facebook uh, um, like apartments through Facebook or something one of the two and then I ended up getting my apartment that I got today so that was about like eight nine different beds in a short period of time like five months it was crazy I'm still in that this same apartment today luckily I didn't lose that lost everything else though but anyways, so my priority was making money. And then by the time I got my apartment that I'm in today, um, May 2019, um, I was relapsing. I, was, I, I, I stopped working my program. And um, I was working too much. And it happened so quick. As soon as I, if I was to pick up today, I go, I will pick up where I left off, which is sniffing dope, smoking coke. Then I'll hit up the doctors, get all the pills so I can get money, smoking weed or drinking. If some, if I'm around people drinking, I'll drink too. That's just where, you know, where it is. So I have to, um, but anyways, going back to that story. So, you know, long run up until... The last video, which I made, which was um, six months ago, uh, you know, I completely surrendered in um, in October, twenty twenty. I went into the um, into the detox October fourth, and um, you know, I completely surrendered again. I had lost everything, you know. And when I got out of the detox, I was so tired. I was totally open to the, you know, probation officer 
to the DCF, to the judge. I didn't even care if they locked me up, whatever. And um, I feel strong about it because in this program they talk about um, you can't have a reservation to drink, right? And I'm experiencing that stronger than ever now that I don't have that. Because before it used to be like, oh, when I'm old, I'll I'll just use the pills and uh, or oh, if I got locked up, then yeah, why wouldn't I use? I mean, th- you know what I mean. But I don't think like that anymore. Um, I've used this program as a routine, the same way that I used drugs as a routinely. I have to um constantly feed my mind with positivity and and surround myself with people like-minded people that have the same stuff in common where I'll just try to get by and stay sober so we don't self-destruct so anyways this video was um basically just you know my first introduction to AA I learned it works if you work it it really does and um you know I have the knowledge of this program but that's not enough I have to I have to do it actively do it you know it's an action based program it's a spiritual based program and um if I'm not working the program it doesn't work if you don't work it so um that's you know consistency is key in in to prioritize your recovery because without that I'll have nothing I'll lose everything and it will happen quick so thank you all god bless have a good day